Hello viewers, are you there? Can you imagine that they are using our people even to do it nowadays? Omahi of all people. <laughs> there is nothing some people cannot do for money. I am happy it is not only Igbo people that are saying it. There are other nice, good Nigerians, even among the Yorubas, who don't take nonsense. And just like this one I'm going to play. They don't take nonsense. Why is it that Igbo people are being used to settle scores? What Omar he said in reply to Pitobi is uncalled for. Pitobi did not mention Igbo people, but Omar he mentioned the Igbo people so that he will place his paymasters. Can you imagine? Now let's play a, a reply. A Yoruba man, a very nice Yoruba man gave to Omar before we continue. Caesar, I'm extremely disappointed at David Omai. Um, those are the kinds of statements I don't expect to hear from a senior government official. And, you know, he's a man I, I tend to respect, you know, because he's, he's a hardworking individual. And, you know, he, he knows his onions when it comes um, to engineering and, and Ministry of Works and Roads Constructions and things like that. So I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but particularly, I was, I, I felt offended by that statement because... I've said it on this program severally. I detest the dog whistling of an entire ethnic group in Nigeria. And let's call a spade what it is. It's becoming one too many that we want to consistently and continuously scapegoat the Igbo ethnic tribe in Nigeria. And it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable because there is a history of violence targeted at that group since 1953 in our country. Listen, Caesar, a meeting was held in Lagos, or not, not necessarily a meeting, in, in Parliament. Anthony and Nahoro moved a motion uh, for the independence of Nigeria. The North opposed that motion, and at the train station, when they were going back yeah. to their constituency, um, they met a crowd that was essentially mocking them. They got back to the North. Chief Akintola led a, a tour across the North you know, to campaign essentially for the independence, to rally the North in support of, of Nigerian in, independence. Guess what happened after that? Riots broke out in northern parts of Nigeria, particularly in Kano, where over 240 Igbos were massacred. Were they the ones that demanded for Nigeria to have an independence at that time? In 1966, particularly in May, yeah. Months before the civil war happened, thousands of them were massacred across northern cities and they had to flee to the east for safety because thousands of them were indiscriminately killed for what they knew nothing about, right? So let's not even talk about the civil war and the hundreds of thousands that were massacred and the fact that after 1970, this entire ethnic group had to start from the scratch again to begin to build their lives. And she's a look at what they have done since 1970. A group that left or started from nothing, went to Bauchi, went to Kano, went to Meduguri, went to Akure, went to Ogun State. And look what they have built in 40 years of hard work, grit, and no support from the federal government look what they have done from themselves but what we consistently and continuously do is to is to signal hate hatred and violence against the group and this thing has to stop we can't continue a country listen if you don't want a group of people to be a part let them go then i, I don't understand this every turn there has to be an excuse to single out an ethnic group i give you a typical example just like the past elections i heard people telling uh, how can how can the, the uh, OB, for instance, have scored 98% in certain states to the north? How can he have scored 98%? Muhammad Buhari, under a PDP-led federal government, scored over 90% votes in four northern states. Go and check the results in Katina. Go and check the results in Bauchi. Go and check the results in Chikawa. He scored over 90% in those states under the leadership of the PDP as a federal government. So it was okay for Buhari to score over 90% in his own core constituency, but something utterly went wrong when Obi did it in the Southeast. This ethnic group have always been part of a nationalist political party and never really have ever built a regional movement. All the times they have supported a political party have been national political parties right from the NCNC. Yeah, true, true. 
they have a stakeholder in the PDP. They don't have a regional party in the sense that we had ACN in the in 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 in, in, in the southwest. In the sense that they had AMPP in the north. They did not have the the, the behemoth of a regional political party. So where is all this hate coming from? Where is all this hate coming from? They tell you now, for instance, that they have a rabid mob who are harassing people on the internet because their candidate lost. We have very short memories. In 2011, a candidate lost in this country and over 800 people were massacred in violence in the north. I so know this because I personally saved 11 core members and were hidden in my father's hotel in Kano. What, so what are we saying? 800 people were massacred because of the ambition of somebody in this country. And suddenly we are losing our minds because we are saying people are, uh, are, 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 are insulting you online. And they are so they're a rabid mob. Let us stop this. Let us stop this ethnic dog whistling. Let us stop this ethnic baiting. And this thing should not continue. We are one people, one country. So what did the Igbo people do to Nigeria? Why are Igbo people always made a scapegoat for anything that happens? Can you imagine the illustration he outlined here? This man, I think he's a Yoruba, or, you know, he's a sincere person. Look at what he outlined. And this time around, an Igbo man is handling a project and they're telling him, be careful, compensate people who buildings are destroyed, Give, uh, make sure you do the right things, and they are using Igbo man again. And he said, you are putting Igbo people in trouble. How does what Peter B said concerns Igbo people. I am very, very disappointed in Omahe. And can you imagine the shame? It is now somebody that is not Igbo that is correcting Omahe. I want to ask Nigeria, what did the Igbo people do to you? Is it because they are successful? Even prior to the war, the Igbo people have been suffering. Somebody talked about a massacre in 1945. Uh, you know, some are saying it is because of um, the 1966 coup. No. This the, uh, attempt to crush the Igbo people have since started. Even before the, and after 1966. Look at what he said. Um, Nahoro was the one who moved a motion for independence of Nigeria. But Igbo people, about 200, has to die for it. It wasn't an Igbo. Ena Horo is from, I think, Benin. And Igbos have to die for this. When you go to the north, for example, Plateau, when there is a quarrel between Plateau people and Fulani, they kill Igbo people. Why? They burn, They start with burning, burning of Igbo shops, burning of Igbo properties. If there is any trouble in the north, it, it may have nothing to do with Igbo people. They start to burn our properties. Look at 1966. Few officers committed. They killed certain people. And then the whole of Igbo people have to suffer for that. Even among the officers, some are saying, uh, they are telling us, uh, the, this one today, now, uh, a data Igbo is not an Igbo. The one who spearheaded it. But that is not our problem. We accept Nzogo, he is Igbo. We accept him as Igbo. But what of Ademola? Ademoyega? He's a Yoruba. He's a Yoruba. He participated. A lot of people. You have Obasanjo, what Obasanjo said about the coup. They blame it on Igbo. Okay, why not hold the officers responsible? No. They are attacking the whole of Igbo ethnic group for that sake. People had to run for their lives. People who are not military men, who were not involved in it. Remember, they went forward to kill all, almost all Igbo military officers. They made an attempt at killing Nojuku. That was even before the war, I'm telling you. Later, they came for the civilians. They called it Igbo coup. Something certain officers carried out, which are not just Igbo officers, even though there were more Igbo participation in it. Look at the civil war. After the civil war, what happened? Okay, by the by the grace of God, Igbo succeeded again. They started afresh. You know where they had to start from? The highest you could get after that war was 20 pounds. 
and look at where they are today. Any small thing they vandalize Igbo properties. Igbos have suffered great trouble in Nigeria. They have suffered so much. Obi scored almost 95% or 90% in, uh, during the election. They wonder why he should score that. But Buhari scored such in, a, as in, an, um, in some unpopular states in the north. Nobody, no eyebrows were raised. Whatever is an Igbo man. I had somebody lost an election in 2011 and 800 people will have to die for that. Igbos have to die for what they don't know. These Igbo are telling you Nigerians, leave us to go. We don't fit into this place. They will say, no, you cannot go. That we are being made a scapegoat. We are being used as sacrifice for what we don't know. I am happy. This is not coming from an Igbo man, from somebody else who is sincere, who is watching from the corner. And it has to end. It has to end. Igbo man cannot be used to settle scores by other Nigerians. If we must be part of this country, we must have equal right like others. We will not be killed as usual. No, it can happen again. And I'm calling all the right Igbo bodies to take this serious. And remember, Igbos have to unify. Those who are telling you, uh, don't unify, don't mind them. Igbos have to unify. If you speak Igbo language, you are Igbo. Unify Igbo project is on. Please share this video widely. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe. Bye bye for now.